Hey everybody, and welcome to another video in our beginner series for Blender. I'm your armorer for Blender, and if you're new to Blender, be sure to check out our earlier videos to acquire the basics of Blender. In this video, we're going to show you a few more modeling tools to improve your modeling by using what you already know and adding a few more things on top to model something real. We're going to do this by building a simple model, a soda can. While creating our soda can, we'll cover a few new tools and techniques and talk about lighting and introduce you to materials. This tutorial will bring together everything you've learned in our previous tutorials and provide you with a real model in the end. In addition to that, you may feel comfortable enough to head out on your own and model something you've been wanting to model. If you'd like to see more videos in this series, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos from Electronic Armory and all things electronic. So let's begin our modeling session. Alright, so here we have our default scene and obviously there's a cube here and a soda can is more of a cylinder shape, so what we're going to do is actually delete this. And if you remember from our previous videos, pressing the X key will bring up our delete menu. So go ahead and do that now. Shift A brings up our add menu. And because, again, it's more of a cylindrical shape, we're going to add a cylinder. All right, this looks pretty good, but it's not quite a can. Uh, let me hit the 1 key to go into front view and hit the number 5 key on our numpad to go from perspective, which again shows depth of field, to orthographic mode. Now this doesn't show depth of field and it gives us a little bit better view of what we're actually modeling. So zoom in here. It kind of looks more like a cube with a whole bunch of facets in it. Go over here to this menu here and we can adjust the length of our model. And so you can see that it has 32 vertices. That's the number of vertices that create the circles, the two circles, the top and the bottom that make up our cylinder. Our radius is one. That's pretty self-explanatory. The depth is how high it is. So we're gonna wanna change that from about two to about 3.5. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit more can-like, if you will. And the next option we have down here is a cap fill type. Right now it's n-gon, which means that if we go up to the top here, it's going to fill this in just as is. If you want something more like a triangle fan, and you need to look at this, we go to tab for edit mode, and you can see that this is more like the triangle fan. Now because I went in edit mode, we lost all of our options to edit our cylinder. And so if I go back out, I no longer have those options. Um, and that's okay, we can manually edit this from now on. So this looks more like a can shape, so let's go ahead and just keep working with this. Now that I'm in front view, I can get a better look at what this can looks like. Now it's really good to have an actual can or maybe a reference image that you're looking at to reference the, the size and shape of this can, but we're just gonna eyeball it for right now. But what I am going to do is use something called the grease pencil. The grease pencil allows me to draw on the screen. If I hold down the D key and use my mouse to click and drag, I can draw on my model. And as I rotate that, you can see that the grease pencil lines also move with that as well. So I'm gonna hit the one key again to return to that view. Now, if I don't want this grease pencil line on here, what I can do is hold down D and use the other mouse button. For me, that's the right mouse button because I use left mouse to select. So for me, I'm gonna hold down the D key and right mouse button and it's going to delete this grease pencil. So the reason I'm gonna use this is I'm gonna outline the shape of my can. And so cans usually have kind of this little inward thing here. It goes up and then there's maybe a little bit of a lip on it before it goes over here. I'm just gonna do one side. You can imagine that that would go over here as well. And then likewise on the bottom of the can, it kind of has this little curve shape here before being rounded off at the bottom. This is more of a, a circular shape here. And so what this is going to allow me to do is now shape my model to better fit these shapes that I've drawn with my, my grease pencil here. So you may be wondering at this point, how do we actually make those shapes in this can? Well, first of all, we need to go into edit mode by hitting the tab key. Now I can see all my vertices. What you might be tempted to do is maybe kind of rotate this around, maybe grab one of these guys, hit the G key to, to move it here and maybe just like manually shape these or something like that. That's a bad idea. And by the way, like I can't select this vertice over here, so I'm gonna turn off my manipulator tool. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Turn that there. Go back to one. Uh, what we're actually going to do is add in some extra geometry, namely a line right here and a line right here so that we can bring this geometry like right around here bring that in a little bit. Like right now, the only geometry I have is this vertice that I can move in and out. You see that moves the entire line or that edge there. We don't want that, so I'm gonna hit the escape key to undo that. So I'm gonna introduce you to the loop cut tool, and the shortcut for that is Control-R. 
and you can see that there's this now this purple line here or magenta and if I drag that around on my model you see it doesn't move until I move right about here and what this is going to do is add extra vertices and an edge to wherever that purple or magenta line is so what I want to do is I want to put it here so horizontally across the top but it's not allowing me to move that so I have to click first and that'll actually add this to my mesh now move this up until it gets to that point so right about there and that's why we use the grease pencil is so I can draw what I want and then I can use my tools to to manipulate the model and, and get it to look like what the grease pencil looks like so I'm gonna select click there to add that loop cut in there and that hasn't done anything yet but if I go back into front mode by hitting one now what I can do is I can hit the S key to scale this in a little bit and kind of pinch that in but that's actually not what I want to do on that line what I want to do is the top line here so let me hit escape and now I want to select all these top vertices but you know I, I can do that by holding down the shift key and selecting these as I go but there are 32 of these as you remember from our options down here when we created the cylinder so I don't want to actually select each individual one so I'm going to show you a couple shortcuts to accomplish this now we can hold down the alt key and select in between this line because we're going to select we're going to select this circle of vertices so if I hold down alt and click you can see that it selects all of those now if I did it on say this edge it'll select that loop and so what blender will do is try to do a best guess of what you want selected in a loop and it stops at this vertice because it doesn't know how to get beyond this point so if I wanted to select this one and complete the loop hold down shift alt and then click on this edge and that'll select all these back vertices and a complete loop and then you can do stuff like scale this out which gives you some interesting shapes there alright so we're gonna go back select that top loop go back into front view and we're gonna scale this down a little bit to match our grease pencil okay so that's looking a little bit better but that's not the shape of our can so we're gonna add in another edge loop here so we're gonna go up to here instead rather than down here hit the control R key and do it there now we can always add it down here if we wanted to by moving our mouse it just depends on where our mouse is if you get stuck and it's doing it vertically instead of horizontally just move your mouse until you see that and it's really based on this edge here this edge here if I go on this edge it goes to vertical so I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna move it up to where about that lip should be click to stop the the slide here and then hit S to scale this in again I'm gonna move this towards its origin and click again because that looks pretty good I'm gonna move my object around just to to make sure that looks pretty good okay so far so good press one to go back again I'm gonna add in another edge loop because we're kinda making a, a curve here and with any curve like a circle it requires a lot of vertices so to get this kind of concave shape here we're gonna add another edge loop here so control R click and right now it's in the center between the vertices circle at the top and the circle of vertices on the bottom so it's in the perfect center here and that's fine I'm gonna click to set that so now I'm gonna move my mouse it's set and I get the S key again and move my mouse a little bit farther from the origin I'm gonna hold down shift because if I scale this in it's gonna to be too quick so I'm gonna hold down shift and then move it in slowly and that'll give me a little bit finer control over how the scales inward okay so I'm gonna scale that in a little bit like that so we get a nice curvature now what I'm looking at is kind of rotate this around it doesn't quite look like it can maybe I want this a little bit bigger so I'm gonna go back into front view I'm gonna get rid of my grease pencil and one way to do that is to hit the end key open this up and scroll down until you see the the grease pencil option and I can actually either turn that off or click down here on this eye to, to hide or show it or if I want to lock it and not have it changed, I can do that as well. And I can add actually multiple layers of grease pencil. And it works just like Photoshop layers if you're familiar with those. So I'm going to hide that for now. I don't want to delete it because I do want to come back to it. So the next option of selecting vertices that I want to show you is I want to select this entire top and bottom vertice loop here. So click there and click there. That's the one I want to select. Now I can hold down the shift key and do that. So I'll, sh I'll click and that'll do both of them as you can see here. But I want to show you another one called the box select and this is one I use all the time especially when you have kind of vertices in a box shape here so I'm gonna hit A to unselect all of that and then I'm gonna hit the B key to give me the box select tool 
And so I'm just going to click and drag and just draw a box around the items, the, the vertices that I want selected. And look at that. However, it only selected the ones that are visible. And so this is a little bit of a kind of a, a stumbling block for beginners. Uh, however, if you go back into front view and you go down to this little option here called limit selection to visible, that's currently selected. So we want to turn that off. And what that allow us to do is now we can kind of see vertices behind our mesh. And so I've hit the one key again, deselect everything by hitting the A key, B for box select, click and drag, now what it'll do is select all those vertices behind these current vertices. So if I let go, you can see instead of doing the visible ones, it selects all of the ones that happen to be in that box. So this is good. I'll go back into front view and scale these out just a bit until we get about there. We can compare it to our, our grease pencil. But I want to introduce you to another tool called the extrude tool. To illustrate what this does, I'll select a couple vertices here, maybe this one and this one and this one, to get this face. Now if I go over here and hit the E key for extrude, I'm going to extrude this along what's called the normal. And the normal is going to be the perpendicular line that comes out of the face of this object. So you can see that by this blue line, this purple line that's coming out of the face. And I'm extruding along that normal. So if I click, It'll drop it there, and now I have an extra piece of geometry sticking out of my can. Now it's not what we want, but I can undo that. And what I do want is to kind of draw this lip out. So Alt-click and then Shift to select multiple, Alt-click. And I want to extrude this lip out to make kind of a, a little lip, as you've seen with most soda cans. So I'm going to hit the E key. And that's going to actually go along the normal of that face. But what I can do is hit the S key without clicking and draw this out like this. And so instead of moving it, I'm actually scaling it out. And I don't want it that big, so I'm going to hold down the shift key to confine my movement a little bit finer here. And just a little lip on there would be good. So right about there is good. All right, so front view again, and that's matching up a little bit better with my grease pencil. Now the grease pencil was just a guide, so I'm just gonna turn that off for now. So this is looking pretty good. Looks like this top one is a little bit bigger, and I actually wanna make it smaller, so I'm just gonna select that and just kinda make it in to give it a little tapering effect as it gets to the top of the can. So very rough, but uh, you can refine it more if you want later. All right, so the top of our can, obviously the can dips in a little bit. So what we can do here is alt select this inner line and you might have to do it a couple times until you get it right. And you can zoom in to actually make that a little bit easier. All right, so once I have this line, I'm gonna shift select click to get this inner vertice to get that whole entire face. Now, I wanna move it down, but if I do G and then confine that along the Z axis here, um, that's not going to look that good because there's going to be a really, really sharp edge right along the top here. So I'm going to undo that. Instead, I'm going to extrude it, but I'm going to extrude it straight down. So I'm going to hit the E key, make sure that it's extruding along the, the axis that we want, in this case, the Z axis, which also happens to coincide with our normal, which is perpendicular to our face. And our face is perfectly flat, so our normal is pointing up in the Z direction. So this is perfect. And I'm just going to lower that a little bit here. Okay, and you can see what extruding does in the up and down. It, it just creates an extra set of geometry. So it created this nice loop of vertices based on basically a copy of this loop and just dro dropped it straight down. So play around with that feature and, and just see what kind of cool things you can do. All right, so from our cylinder, we've actually created a lot of geometry here. Uh, we haven't added any other shapes. We've just added edge loops and extrusion. So it wouldn't be much of a soda can if it didn't have an opening that you can drink out of. So how the heck are we gonna create that? Right now we have a cylinder that's created with triangle fans here. So these triangle fans are three vertice faces. So each one of these faces is a triangle. So if I select this one, shift select that one, and then the center, you can see that that face is only made up of three. But what I wanna do is show you the edge loop two and how it works with circles. All right, because these are triangles, uh, I don't actually want to have these in here. I want to actually do quads, which are four vertice faces here. So like, for example, one, two, three, four, this is a quad here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select middle vertex, hit the X key, 
and just hit delete vertices. Okay, so this leaves a big gaping hole in our model, which is not necessarily ideal, but uh, we'll repair this in a second. So Alt select click here and get that inner edge loop. You just kind of rotate your model around just to make sure that's the edge loop that you actually do want. So that looks good. I'm going to get a little bit more real estate by hiding this menu here by hitting the N key. Get rid of that. All right, so we do have that selected. I'm going to hit the E key to extrude and install. Instead of moving this around, I'm going to hit the S key to scale this in. And I'm going to scale it to right about there. I'm going to hit the 7 key to go into top view. Kind of zoom out a little bit. So our opening is kind of going to be a circle here. So let me turn back on the grease pencil here. Let me add another one for, let's call it the can hole. And now that I'm on this layer, I can hit the D key and kind of draw a circular shape right about there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see that our edge loop here is going to kind of coincide with the bottom of this circle. So let me scale this out until it reaches the bottom there. Perfect. Hit the E key to extrude again and then the S key to scale. And put it right about at the top there. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of shape our vertices here and deform them from a circle that goes along here to fit this shape. But to do that, I need to add a little bit more geometry around this side so that I can kind of get this bulge out here. And I'll show you what that is in a second. Okay, so I'm going to add Control R for another edge loop. And again, get on one of these edges here. You can see it's kind of flickering. But make sure it's just circle there. Click. I'm going to move this up right about here to kind of get that apex of this circle here and then control R again and draw that down to get that apex close to here. So this apex of that circle there. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of grab this one, use the G key to select. And now because I'm in the top down view, Blender will automatically keep this vertex as I move it around on this Z plane. So it won't move it up and down, it'll just keep it on the XY plane here, and I can move it just about there. But I need to do that for this vertice as well, so if I hit the G key and move that there. Um, my grease pencil is not a perfect circle, and so if I follow the grease pencil, my geometry is going to match what the grease pencil is, and that's not what I want. So how do we use Blender to actually make more perfect shapes? So let me undo that and show you how. Okay, to make this hole, we're going to have to shape these vertices to kind of fit that circle. And then we're going to cut out the faces that make them. And so to do that, I'm going to take these inner vertices here, this one and this one, move them out to this grease pencil line here. So I'm simply going to scale those out hitting the S key. And my grease pencil is not symmetrical, but you can get the idea. So I'm just going to move it just about there, making sure not to overlap these lines here. And I'm going to select these two, scale those out a little bit. And these two, and scale those out a little bit. So now I want this shape to kind of come in here, so I'm going to select those. And make sure you're not selecting the vertices behind here, like for example, the bottom ones, which we don't have. So hit 7, return. Now I'm going to hide the grease pencil line, and that's looking decent. I mean, we could, we could clean that up a little bit, but I think that's okay for right now. Now to delete these interfaces here, what I could do is select all the vertices that surround them, uh, but that's a lot of vertices that I have to select. So an easier method of doing that is going down in this menu here, and this is vertex select, this is edge select, which allows me to select different edges, and this is face select. And clicking on these little dots here, or these little squares, will allow me to select those edges, which is what, what I want to do. Okay, so once I have those faces selected, if I was to cut this out as is by hitting the X key and deleting the faces, it would kind of delete this line here, these edges that I wanted here to complete our circle. So before I do that, I'm going to go back into top mode, go back to edge select, alt click on those edges, and I'm going to hit the E key and then the S key to scale that in to complete our geometry there. And now when I go back into face select and select those faces, Again, holding down the shift key. Now when I hit the X key and delete faces, it just deletes those faces and leaves the rest of the edges intact. 
this might look like a square-ish hole to you. These edges are very, very flat. Um, that's actually what we want for right now. I'll show you kind of how to clean that up in a little bit. But so far, so good. Let me go back to Vertex Select here. Select these edges here. And what I'm going to do is hit the E key, hit the S key to scale in. I'm gonna scale in just about to there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge all of these. There's 32 of them, as you remember, because they come from the outer edge. 32 vertices into one. And to do that, to merge all these in, I'm gonna hit the Alt-M key. It's gonna bring up our merge menu. And it's gonna ask you, where do you wanna merge all of these vertices, the ones that are selected, to? And I'm gonna say, at center. This is where I'm going to merge the vertices to. And just like that, they all go toward the center. Uh, so that's a quick and dirty way to clean that up. All right, so now that we have our can with our hole in it, we can add the tab to it as well. Now I'm just gonna do this really quickly. I'm gonna hit the seven key, and I'm gonna draw this out. So Tabs kind of look like this shape here. Oops, gotta turn back on my grease pencil so I can see it. Hold down the D key, select click. And let's see, now tabs are kind of big and they kind of overlap the hole just a little bit. And this is where you kind of want to have reference images, but we'll just eyeball this. All right, so there we go. There's our ugly looking tab. Now to get the geometry for this, what we're going to actually want to do for this one is we're going to separate that into its own mesh. So hit the tab key to go back into object mode. And for the tab, we're actually going to add a plane. That might not make sense right now, but I'm going to show you how to shape a plane into a tab. So hit the shift A key to add a plane, and that's going to add it at the 3D cursor, which is kind of in the middle of our can. Hit the G key and the Z key to move that up just above the edge of our can here. And so there you go. Uh, but that looks terrible, so let's go into top view mode by hitting 7. And go into edit mode for this plane by hitting tab. And I'm going to scale this down until it closely matches one of the dimensions. So maybe about that. Click, hit the G key, and then the Y key to move it straight up. Because I want to keep it centered. And that's actually pretty good. And then I'm going to hit the scale key and the Z key to constrain that to the Z axis and scan that in. Obviously my grease pencil is not symmetrical, but that's okay. We'll get it close. Actually, I like that right there. Okay, perfect. And now if you look at this, you can say, yeah, well, I can kind of see how this is working, but what we need to do is add extra geometry to make those shapes. And so how do we do that? We use the loop cut tool. And so control R, we'll add our loop cups. Now if you scroll your mouse wheel up, you can get multiple loop cups. So I'm gonna add four. That's all gonna make them evenly spaced. So if you need to divide your mesh into four equal parts, this is one way to do it. So click and then click again, and that'll place those loop cuts there. And I'm gonna add these individually. So I'm gonna select this one and this one, scale these in, scale these in, maybe scale these in just a hair, holding down shift. Scale these in. You don't want anything to be perfectly flat when you're talking about making rounded objects. And scale that in. So that's looking eh, decent. Okay, and so to make these holes, we do something very similar to this bottom hole here is we add in extra loop cuts. I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel to get those and that looks about right there. So I'm gonna click and click again to set those. And I'm going to drag these, so select, and then scale these out. This will keep everything perfectly symmetrical. For this one, I'm going to move this down on my screen by hitting G and Y. It's always good to keep track of where your axes are. Pull that down. Actually, I should pull these down as well. And I need some extra geometry up here, so I need a line. So I'm going to add it there. I'm going to click, and then I'm going to slide that up until it's right about there. Select this one, select this one, and maybe move it in just a hair. Um, don't worry right now if it's not perfectly circular. Like right now, it's really hard edged. We'll get around to that in a second. So I'm going to add in another loop cut here. Click, and now you can see it's, it's not perfectly flat. I'm going to hit the E key. So the E key will make it even, and the F key will actually flip it to the side. So right now, it's aligning with this edge. If I hit F, it'll align it to this edge. How do I know that? Uh, you can see down in the lower left-hand corner, we have shortcut keys that illustrate kind of where we have our edge slide on, and it's telling us that E for even is off. So if I turn that on, our flipped is off, but if I hit F, it'll turn it on and switch those back and forth between the different edges that we're sliding between. 
Um, this is desirable for many reasons, but what I want, really want to do is make this edge flat. So I'm going to hit F to unflip that and line it up with this one as well. Okay, so when we have that, again, hit the A key, deselect that one, select that one, so scale this in a little bit. Scale these in, and my grease pencil is really kind of bad, so let me just redo that. That didn't help much, but we'll get it. And then I'll move this one down, so hit the G key and move that one down. All right, so I'm going to turn off my grease pencil so I can see. Um, pretty terrible job, but we'll clean this up just a hair. Go to our face select mode. Select these faces here, hit delete, and delete those faces, and do the same up here as well. Okay, so you can spend a little more time cleaning that up, adjusting it, maybe actually get a reference image so you can match that up better. Uh, but for right now, this is looking pretty good. Uh, now, if you notice that our tab here, while it's very square, it's sitting right on the plane of our can, and that doesn't look good. So if you do in object mode, and then move that up, and kind of get a, a sense there, but it's a little bit too high, so I'll move that down just a hair, and that's looking pretty good. Now you might be thinking, no, that looks terrible, everything's all flat. Well, let me show you kind of a little quick trick to make these smooth. Select your can, which is a different mesh. You see these two are independent of each other. Select your can, and go over to this menu here, the transform menu. If you do not see this menu for some reason, hit the T key, and the T key again will make it show up again. Turn on smooth shading. That'll make our can a little bit more smooth. So it looks a little bit better. Do the same thing with our tab. Okay, that didn't do anything, but I wanna show you how else we can do that. I'm gonna introduce you to modifiers. What modifiers allow you to do is apply a non-destructive modifier or something that changes your mesh that you can undo or alter without changing your geometry. So let me show you this and then maybe you'll get a better idea of how it will act. So the modifiers are over here, this little wrench icon, so click that. If you don't see the icon, maybe your screen is a little bit smaller like mine, what you can do is, just like you can rotate your model by holding down the middle mouse key and moving your mouse, you can do the same here, so middle mouse cut button and moving this back and forth. So we're in a modifier options here, select add modifier. And what we're gonna do is a subdivision surface modifier to kind of add more geometry dynamically without doing that to our mesh. And so by just clicking there, you can see that it rounded all those edges for us. And again, you can clean that up to make it look a little bit better, but that looks okay for right now. Do the same thing with your can, so select your can. And you see all the modifiers on our can, which are none right now, so hit add modifier subdivision surface on that as well. You can see that made it look a little bit more like a can, but what it did was add some funky geometry down there. I'll show you how to fix that. So hit the tab key, and now you can see that we have an edge loop here. Let me select edges here. And what the subdivision surface does is add an extra geometry that you don't necessarily see. So if we, add, we click on this button here, we can see what kind of geometry it is adding. Go over to vertices and you can see how this looks. And so you you might be wondering, well, this isn't actually here. The bottom should be down here. Using our edge loop tool, what we're going to do is add in what are called holding edges. And I'll show you what that is. So go up to here, hit control R, add an edge loop, and then drag this down. You can see as I drag that down, it pushes out our geometry. So drag that down until our scan is a little square. Maybe I'll drag that up just to kind of keep the, the rounded edge there. And now you can see from front view, our can kind of has a nice rounded shape. And that's due to the subsurface division modifier. And if you want to see what the effect that is, you can click on this eye over here to turn that off. So that's pretty good. So let's go for the bottom of our can. If you remember, if I click on the eye again to show you this, we need this little kind of in cut here. And so if you remember how to do that, we're actually going to drag this edge loop up. So G and then Z, drag it right about there so it lines up. And we're gonna add a little bit extra geometry here. So Control R, click, and instead of moving this in, I'm gonna hit S to scale. And a little bit too much on the scale. Select click on this edge till you get this edge loop here, and then scale this in as well. So it matches up with our grease pencil. Okay, perfect. And you see that this brought in our geometry here. Again, the subdivision surface is rounding our model off a little bit. So control R and then click and drag down on this edge. 
And that's going to make a nice transition between these edges, which are flat, to kind of bring this in to match kind of the flow a little bit better. You can kind of think of it as rounding off all of our vertices together based on the average of where they are in 3D space. So by adding more vertices in a given spot, the weight of that geometry or the gravitational pull, if you will, pulls that mesh out toward those vertices. So to illustrate that, if I hit G and then Z and pull this up, and select there, you can see kind of the, the average between this point, this point, and this point is somewhere around here. So I'm gonna undo that, put that back. If we go into object mode, we can then kind of look at our can. So that's looking pretty good. Maybe I'm gonna add a little bit more geometry to this top piece here. So tab in edit mode, control R, and just pull that up just slightly so that that rounded can looks a little bit better there. Okay, don't get too crazy with too much geometry. It's just a can, so we don't want to go overboard on that. All right, so let's revisit our tab here. Our tab is looking a little flat. If we go into edit mode, what we can do is select everything, hit the E key, and that'll pull our object up. Tab to go into object mode. And you can see that kind of made our tab have dimension. Back in the edit mode, but it made it a little round, so I don't think I want to do that. Plus, if I change these, Say I want to pull these out, well then I got to also pull out these as well. So it kind of makes it more complicated than it needs to be. What I'm going to do instead, it's going to undo those changes. Okay, so now that we just have these vertices here, what I'm going to do is another modifier called the solidify modifier. So go down to that, select that. And you see it pretty much does the same thing, go into object mode and it added dimension or depth to our tab. And we can adjust that with our thickness parameter here. Let me explain this out a little bit so you can see. So let's drag up the thickness. That's probably a little bit too thick, but you get the idea. You can make it as thick as you want, maybe about half that, so 2.5. All right, it's looking good. Now it's a little too rounded for my taste. Let's put in some holding edges there. So control R, select that, and I'm actually gonna hit the escape key to keep that center because I wanna add one on this side as well. And hit escape to put that back in the center. And then alt shift and then click, and what that'll do is it'll select this entire line. So alt select click is a nice way of selecting connected lines as well. When you're in a circle, it'll complete the circle. When you're in a line like this, it'll just terminate at the, the top vertice and the bottom vertice. I'm gonna scale these out by hitting the S key and scaling these out. But if you see, it also scales them in the Y direction as well. So I can constrain that scale to the X and just scale those in and out along the X. Let's put that there. And then maybe some inner ones here. Hit escape to put those in the center, click. Okay, and scale along the X as well. To put in some holding edges there. Hit the tab key so you can see it. Now that looks good in the X axis, but in the Y axis, these are kind of a little too faceted for my case. So let's go into edit mode, put in a little edge loop there and another edge loop there. Now that's a lot of geometry for just a little tiny detail like that. Now if you're going for high detail, this might be perfect. But if you're going to put this into a game, this is way too much geometry for a game. Because right now we're at 88 vertices just for the tab. If I go into object mode, you can see that we have almost 3,000 vertices in this object, which is ridiculous if it, which is way more than you want just for a little can that nobody's probably gonna see in your game. But if you're going for realism, you might wanna do it this way. So let me go ahead and add some more edge loops here until you get the roundness that you want. And as you notice, because we have that solidify modifier on it, if I wanted to move these up, let's hit the seven key, and I'm gonna hit the B key to do box select, but I'm going to hit the shift key to deselect those. So B, hold down shift, and that'll unselect those. And I'm going to move this guy up. Move this one up as well. You'll notice that the bottom shape also deforms as well. So we don't have to transform any vertice below that. So that's really nice.
and that's why we want to use modifiers. Okay, I'm not going to get too much more into this tab. I think we've really overmodeled this for right now. It could still use a little bit more of attention, but I think it's for this tutorial we're good. So uh, as you notice in real life cans, tabs don't lay perfectly flat. So let's go ahead and rotate this using the R key, and I'm going to rotate it along the X axis and just kind of pick that up just a little bit because our can is opened that means the tab has been pulled. So I'm rotate that and you can see it's now intersecting with the other mesh, the G key, the Z key. Move that up just slightly. Okay. And let me turn off these crease pencil lines. And not too bad. Maybe we want to scale that down. I'm going to scale that in edit mode. Just scale everything down a little bit. Our tab feels a little bit too big. Hit tab. Back into object mode. G and then Y. Move that down just a little bit and that's looking okay. Maybe make the mouse a little bit bigger, but that's okay for right now. If we hit the zero key, this will go into our camera view and show you what the camera is looking at. Now our can is slightly out of center, so what we want to do is we want to kind of give it an interesting angle, maybe move the camera into the center, maybe put it into thirds, but we don't want it right here. So what's the easiest way to do that? If I move now, it's just going to pop me out of the camera, which is right here. I could try to move that camera manually, maybe move it over here, go back in to see what it looks like. That looks terrible. So what do we do? First of all, undo that. And with your menu open here with the N key, if it's not open, hit the N key. Scroll down until you see lock camera to view. It's one of my favorite options. And so now when we move, it moves the camera as well. So it's locking the camera to my view. And just like you maneuver in 3D space, you do that as well. Hold down the middle mouse button, click. Hold down the shift button and that'll pan. And so let's give this kind of an interesting angle. Maybe put it into thirds. And to help you with thirds, what you can do when you're in this view is go over to our camera tab, select that, go down where it says composition guides, select that, and you can turn on the thirds guide. Now, if you know anything about composition, then this will make sense to you. So I'm just going to kind of put this in thirds right about there. And thirds, in short, just gives it an interesting composition rather than everything being dead center, dead on. This kind of makes it a little bit more interesting, but that's the short version. Okay. And the other thing we want to do is we want to change this lighting to kind of affect our light. Right now it's really, really far away. And if we render this, the light will be really far over here, but maybe we want it to come from over here. So so if I render this, and before we render that, make sure we switch from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Hit the F12 key to render this. Okay, of course everything is in gray. We'll fix that in a second. I want to change that lighting to maybe be coming from the left-hand side here. So hit the Escape key to return. Make sure our light is selected. Hit the G key, and maybe the X key just to keep it along the X axis and move it over here. Now hit the F12 key to re-render that. And I think I like that lighting direction a little bit more. However, I think maybe it's a little bit too high. and Maybe I want to get the, the lighting to kind of wrap around the can a little bit more. But computationally, it's a little expensive to have to re-render this every time I move the lamp. So let me show you a cool little trick. Hit the escape key. Let me introduce you to our 3D views display modes. So if you go down here and select, right now we're in solid view. We can change this to wireframe. We can change it to bounding box, which is really great if you have just a ton of geometry on your screen and it's slowing your computer down. You can have it do bounding box, which will just give you the outlines of all the objects. This is also great for physics simulations where you just want to see how the objects are moving through your scene but not necessarily seeing them themselves. It really, really speeds up your, your physics simulation. Uh, the one we want is actually rendered. And so this will render in real time and I can move my camera around and show what that looks like rendered. This is pretty CPU intensive, so use sparingly. Okay, now I don't see my light because we're in rendered mode, but I can select it from here. It's already selected, so that's good. If I didn't have it selected, I could always select it again. And it's invisible for me, so I can use my Blender keyboard shortcuts to move it. G and then X, and I can move it to the right and you can see how the lighting changes. And so I want to get that wrap just a little bit there. Okay, and then G and then Y and move that here. And that looks good right there. We'll get into lighting a little bit more as we do more complex models in the future. The next thing we really need to do is get it from the very, very bland gray look that we've had throughout our tutorials. We're actually going to stop there for now. In the next video, we'll finish up our can and add some materials to make it look more realistic. In future videos, we'll go more in-depth on these subjects.
Give this video a like if you want to see more Blender tutorials from Electronic Armory. Make sure you subscribe to get notified of the next video, whether it's native mobile development, game development, electrical engineering, or anything else to arm yourself in the digital world. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.